Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, evening, wherever you are. How's everyone doing today? We're getting set up to do a live watercolor class. I'm going to be showing you how to paint this kind of foggy forest type scene. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about depth and then we're also going to be talking about um, different supplies and how they're going to change the effects that happen. So we'll be painting this a couple different times with different supplies. So if you're going to be painting along today, you're going to want to just grab your watercolors, whatever ones you want to use. I'm actually going to be painting the majority of today with uh, angle brushes. These are uh, some of my old acrylic angle brushes, but I've been using them a lot in watercolor lately. So I've got a quarter inch and a half inch here. Curious to know, where's everybody joining from today? I'm in Colorado. It is a beautiful summer day here. So far it's not too hot, which is nice. <laughs> Chicagoland, nice. Welcome, welcome. Iowa. Nova Scotia, New Mexico, Ukraine, in Sweden. Alabama, Daytona Beach, Belgium. It's raining. Oh, I could go for a rainy day right now. The Philippines, Poland, Finland, Bay Area, Washington, Boulder. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> UK, Malaysia. Oh, we've got a nice crowd today. Tennessee, Netherlands, Colombia. I've been seeing so much stuff about Colombia and travel things. It looks so colorful. I'm like, I don't know much about traveling to uh, South American countries because I've never really looked into it, but gosh, Colombia is like calling to me. Something about visiting Colombia. I feel like, I feel like I'm gonna have to plan a trip because it looks so just vibrant and colorful and beautiful. North Carolina ending soon. No, we're just about ready to get started. Canada. Southern Michigan, Orange County. Wow, we really do have a really nice group here. So yeah, we're gonna be getting started in about one to two minutes. And uh, we're gonna be painting this today. I'm actually gonna paint it a bunch of times because I think it'd be really fun on this live to, this is actually a pretty quick painting to do. Um, and so since we have an hour together, that's what I've scheduled, I think it'd be fun to paint it with a couple different sets of supplies so that um, we can actually see how different it can turn out uh, just based on how different supplies move on the paper. Stockholm, Sweden. All right, it's that time. So welcome everybody. For those of you who don't know, my name is Lacey. I'm the artist behind Rebel Unicorn Crafts. And every other week we get together and we paint together or you guys can just watch and like maybe retain some of this. But the idea is that something I've covered in one of our little short videos in the week or at the last couple weeks, I will do and we'll paint together in real time, which kind of will allow you to ask questions as we go along. And you can actually see how long the different layers and things like that take. And also when I goof, I tell you guys when I goof and then we can kind of actually fix things together. So I think what I'll do for the sake of, since we're gonna talk about different paints today, I'll be painting the same thing on this paper, which is a potentate paper. And this is, I do think this is cotton paper. I'm trying to see, this one I think is cold press, I believe. So this is actually on a block for those of you who are unfamiliar with watercolor blocks. They are pads of paper that are glued all the way around the edges. 
so that they stay nice and flat. Except for there's usually a tab, and this one's here, and then you just take a little like palette knife. You don't need anything too sharp. And then you just go right around the edges to actually slide under. And when I painted this one, I was actually using the remaining paint that I just had left on some mixing wells. So I don't actually, it's a combination of several different types of paint. So uh, today I think I'm gonna try to use a couple that I haven't used in a while. I feel like the Windsor Newton palette will be a good one for this. I do really like some of their neutral and some of their green colors. Um, other than that, this palette kind of, I don't like to paint with this one a ton, but I do think it's great for some of their yellows and greens for neutral colors. I also want to play with uh, this Soho palette because this one, it's going to have some different types of effects. I know it's going to be a lot different on the paper than this one will, so it'll be interesting to kind of compare. And then if we have time at the end, I think I'll play around with doing some tube paint ones so we can see what happens with those. So that's the general plan. Um, what we're gonna need to do is you're gonna need some water. So I've got my cups of water here. And in general for um, watercolor, I don't always abide by this, but I do usually have two. One is meant to kind of be the clean water so that we can refill our brushes with clean water without kind of muddying things up or for wetting. So I do have two here that I'm gonna do my best to keep separate. Let's see. Are you guys, is everybody ready to get started? If you are, give me a thumbs up or if you need another minute, uh, we can we can chit chat a little bit here. In the meantime, I will just go ahead and spray these colors in my palette just to kind of get them activated and ready to go. Not yet, <laughs> got a couple thumbs, we got a not yet. The ceramic cups, so these are actually some that I made at the beginning of the summer. I, I do belong to a pottery guild, and so I've been kind of experimenting with different things, and these are kind of fun. They're different. I can't tip them to the side because they're full of water, but this one's a little bit taller, and this one's a little bit shorter, and then it does technically have this little brush rest thing that I added onto it. Oh, well, that one's a heavier brush, but there we go. <laughs> So I've been having fun. I'm making some more of those. There is actually at the Pottery Guild I belong to in North Fort Collins. We are ha having a second show coming up. I think it's in two weeks. And this is like there will be heavily discounted pottery. So it will be things that have like little tiny cracks on the bottom that don't necessarily affect the use of it. But they just aren't quite up to standard. Maybe something just didn't work out ready. So this will be available later. I did post last uh, two weeks ago last night. Onto, tick, or onto YouTube, so if you guys need to kind of rewatch these. Sometimes it takes me a while to get around to posting it, but I do eventually post the, the lives. Usually Monica's nice enough to give me a little nudge because sometimes I just forget because uh, it takes a while for it to process. All right, I think we're ready now, so we're going to uh, the Pottery Guild's in North Fort Collins. I'm going to take this. This is just like a very basic wash brush, a little two-inch wash brush. And I'm going to fill it up with clean water and then I'm going to wet my paper. I'm gonna leave a line here that's kind of crisp, but I'm gonna wet the whole thing at the top, all the way to the top. And even if we're not painting our trees up that far, it is a good idea to actually wet all the way to the edge if you don't want there to be a stop line where the kind of bleeding and blending goes. That was one of the questions I got last time that was like, okay, why did you paint them down here? And then why did we have to wet all the way up here? If we technically stopped wetting kind of here as these bled, there would be kind of this harsh line where anything that bled all the way up there, we would be able to see where it ended. So that's why we wet all the way to the top, even if we're not planning to paint at the top. This is totally personal preference, so if you're like, well, I don't want to paint up there, I don't mind the line, then you don't have to. So this is going to be a good exercise in seeing how wet things are. I'm going to put a little more, it's drying a little bit over to this side. It's always a good idea when you're preparing to work wet on wet to make sure you've got like a light. You could even use the flash on your phone or something because knowing this is how it's going to be easy to see, get that reflection and you're gonna be able to see if the water is moving around or if it's kind of starting to dry just based on how the reflection looks. All right, so it's I've got it fairly even. 
Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to take a little, we could do this with whatever brush we want to actually, but I'm, there's a little green in here. I'm just going to start with whatever this green is that was left in my palette. And I'm just going to kind of tap around. Let's put a little more water in here because I want this to move around a lot more. We're just going to tap around because we want these to kind of be the trees that are in the background but are a little out of focus. So let's modify this a bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of this kind of blue-green into it. And I'm just going to drop that in. These don't need to be any sort of specific shape. We just want to add in some color variation and we want to add in some kind of like conical adjacent um, shapes here. I'm going to take some more of this kind of like olive green type color. And then let's actually, I'm going to put in a little of this. I think this is burnt umber. Put a little of that in. Let's, let's put another one in here. This part we don't need to overthink because this part is going to be totally in the background. Um, but we're just kind of making some tree adjacent, adjacent shapes, adjacent. <laughs> All right. I like to just have a little color variation too, so I will come in. Notice I'm getting a little bit, my paper did warp a bit around where that opening is, so there's a little bit of water kind of flowing there. So I've got a couple options. I'm gonna take a little scrap of paper towel here. And I'm just going to, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that just so it doesn't flow around as much. I'm using a quarter inch angle brush, but like for this part, it doesn't really matter at all. Um, here, I'll actually, I'll do the next ones with a little qu a quill brush so that you can see this part, this part we don't wanna overthink, this part just kinda of go with the flow, modify those colors, and we can just kinda of drop them in. I feel like we need a little more yellow in one of these. There we go. Just kind of modifying those colors just a little bit. I don't know. Let's let's leave it there. Let's actually take these same colors though, because um, we can actually kind of prepare for the foreground. So we could just take either one of these brushes and we can just kind of tighten up that bottom part here. And this is just to add like this could be a reflection, this could be a field. We're just adding something to kind of balance this. So I'm just gonna take these same colors and just kind of flick my brush along. Kind of down here. Ooh, that was, a, that was a thicker one. Let's modify a little bit. So what we're doing here is we're building in a first layer we can add in more of these in a minute too, once we know all the other colors that are actually gonna be there. What we're kind of trying to do is force perspective with doing very little work. So I'm still getting a lot of that movement here. I'm just gonna pick that up a little bit, but I can build in my next layer of trees to kind of hide that area that's going on. And so we're trying to create this perspective by making there be a little depth because you know when you're looking at something, you're really only focusing on kind of one part at a time. So we wanna make sure that the things that are in the background are gonna be less well-defined than the things that are gonna be in the foreground, which will kind of help us to fake that perception. Okay, let's see, make sure. All right, the wet spot kind of does look like fog. So the next thing we're gonna do is, especially with this, depending on how wet it is or how much water actually have flowing around here, I think I'm gonna be okay. But what I wanna actually do next is I'm gonna take a second to dry this layer because then we're going to uh, add in these foreground trees, which are going to be more well-defined and we don't want them to move around. These ones didn't flow around, so we actually want it to be on a dry layer. So what I'm gonna do is I will be using a heat gun here. And I get a lot of questions about the heat gun I have. Um, 
is this Chandler tool and it's got two settings and I do have it linked on my Amazon. So if you guys need an easy link to it, you can get it for, through there. Uh, I do like this one. It's been making weird noises recently, but I have been using it like three or four times a day. I use it a lot. And so I'm like, I don't know if I'm the problem or if it's supposed to make that noise. <laughs> so anyways, if you're sensitive to noise or anything, usually TikTok does a pretty good job of helping to mute this type of a noise. But just in case, you might wanna turn your volume down for about 20 or 30 seconds. And I'll count down now for three, two, one. Yeah, this is a heat gun, and one thing you want to keep in mind is heat guns get super hot. Um, so you you don't want to just sit and just let it sit in one area. You want to make sure you're constantly moving it, or you can actually burn your paper. Um, so do be a little careful when you are using a heat gun to kind of... I haven't... I've only done that like once when I'm really not paying attention. So it's not a super duper concern, but it is a potential concern. So just kind of make sure you're moving it. You burned your paper. Oh, yikes. Yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like too, I did it the other day when it was on something I really didn't want to burn it. And of course, that's always the case. I'm going to set this to the side for a second because uh, we do want to make sure. The other thing with doing these kind of fake or forced perspective type things is things are not only going to be fuzzier that are further away, but they're also going to be lighter in general and lighter in color so that they're, they're not competing as much. We want some contrast between the foreground and the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some darker green colors and have them on hand so that we can actually use them. I always like to have little tester strips on hand and then we're just going to make a couple different green type colors. So let's make sure we put enough water in here to where we're going to be able to actually do something with it. So we're starting here. We got a really light one and I'm just going to basically grab a little bit of each of these greens and let's check. We're getting closer, but I do want this to be a little darker. I want it to be have, have more color saturation versus how much water is there. Maybe even a bit more. And I'm actually going to also, I'm gonna take a little bit of this burnt umber color just to kind of mute this down because I feel like this is like a little bit too vibrant of a green. We could also mute with a red. That would have been a good one. We'll, do, we'll mix up another color because I usually like to have a couple colors on hand. So there we go. That's the green color that I want. This is a nice dark green. I use kind of this olive green, this kind of viridian green, and then I use some burnt umber to mix that up. There we go. <laughs> the, dra the dragonfly one. <laughs> Let's just see. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're a new artist, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So this is, um, I'm gonna use this color as a base. This is kind of like a, an interesting green color, yellow color, but that's okay. We can use it as a base for our next color. Cause I want, I just want two colors. Let's just do two. We'll kind of keep it a little bit more simple. And let's keep this one a little bit more kind of olivey type green, just a bit more. I do think I need a little bit of this though. Maybe 
maybe just a bit more of that one. I'm afraid I'm going to end up accidentally mixing the same color twice. <laughs> yeah, I've kind, of, I've kind of done that, that. So let's actually, let's really lean into kind of where I'm going with this. And let's, let's make this more of a blue green one. We can also use that to do some kind of shadowing on the um, boughs as well. If we kind of make this, so I'm taking some of this. I think this is Prussian blue. Just mixing this in as I go. There we go. That'll be, that's kind of a nice contrast between these two colors and they'll look really good together too. So those are the two ones I'm going to use. We can always modify as we go along. <clears throat> All right. So we dried this layer, so this is nice and dry, and we're going to paint these trees. Now if you're like really worried about painting these trees, it's not actually going to be that hard. You, if you've already seen the video, you're like, yeah, you just tap it up and down basically. But um, in case you haven't seen it, don't, don't worry. You don't need to be able to paint every single one of these details. The details are just going to kind of happen. So what we're going to do is with whatever... You could use this, and actually I'll probably, I'll do this with two different brushes so you can see. One of the things that I like to make sure I talk about on my channel is like, yeah, you can use the exact same supplies as me. But you know what? You can also do all of these same things with different supplies. You don't have to use the exact same brushes. You don't have to use the exact same whatever. I want to make sure that, um, you know, this isn't just about making sure that you have everything because sometimes you're not going to have access to it. Sometimes you're not going to have the budget to do whatever. So if you can just find something that's like kind of a similar tool, it'll work just fine. All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to make a mark kind of down. This is where my trunk is going to be. Then at the very top of this, I'm going to reload with some of that color just to make sure there's some of my brush. I'm just going to I'm going to kind of turn this so that I'm just getting just the tip and I'm just going to kind of tap my brush just a little bit. Then as I move down, I'm just going to start rotating and tapping. So it's just this and then I'm kind of moving the brush and I'm also kind of moving out to the sides. Pine trees and evergreen trees in nature. I'm going to need to refill. They have gaps in them. They have some natural things that are a little bit off. So if you actually kind of build those in, it's going to look a little more normal. So see, we're just literally just tapping. And then I'm just kind of creating a little bit of chaos by kind of tilting my brush so I can get a little movement in those boughs. I feel like I'm going to grab this other green and I'm just going to plop that in in a couple little areas. So it's just a little bit less flat. And while it's still wet, we could also come in just with a little bit of more blue in our brush if you wanted to kind of shadow under a couple areas. These are all totally optional things. So we've made our first tree. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to do the same thing, but now this is with a slightly larger brush so that you can see. I do feel like maybe that was slightly too small of a brush to really be efficient at making that tree. So let's do it again. I'm going to modify it just a bit so that it, it's just not the exact same color. I'm just taking a little of this, um, yellow that's there. And then let's put that one, let's go right here. Just a little swoop down. And then we're going to lightly touch, tap just a couple of those little boughs at the top. And then we're just going to, oh, I need some, I need some more in my brush. That really sucked up a lot. We're going to have to come in with some additional colors. For sure. All right, I'm going to grab that other one because this is not concentrated enough. 
And look how different it is with the different brush and the shapes that I'm getting because I'm using this different brush. Even though it's the same type of brush, we're getting some very different kind of shapes just because there's more bristles so they kind of splat a bit more. So I'm just going to kind of drop in a little more of this pigment because I feel like I did not have enough. That brush sucked up a lot more than I initially anticipated. So I'm currently using the Winsor Newton Cotman line, I believe. Let's just, does it say? It just says Winsor Newton. I don't remember. I bought this one years and years ago. Um, and I do like it for a lot of the greens. This one, I lost a lot of the definition, so I actually do like this one a little better for this, but I'm gonna wait for this to dry a little bit more, and then I might add a little more definition to it. But in the meantime, let's add in a couple more trees. I'm gonna try to vary the heights, and with that, like for, for some reason, I feel like there needs to be like a little kind of scraggly tree here. So I'm gonna make sure I leave a little bit more space in between. Like maybe this one's just kind of getting going. It's just kind of starting. It's a little tree journey. I'm gonna drop in just a little extra color. And maybe a little bit of blue to just kind of shadow along that one side. And then we could leave it here. This one, I want it to soak in just a bit more before I try to add in a little more definition. Um, should I add in another tree? Should I add another one over to the left? Do I sell my work? I do have some stuff listed. It's not my main thing right now just because... Um, yeah, I'm just, I like teaching you guys. So most of the stuff I know you guys would rather create. Trees need some more friends. Okay. Let's add in another one here. It doesn't need to be a perfect line. We're just, I just like to make kind of a little guideline so I can stay kind of on track. Tap a couple times at the top. Also, somebody was asking about supplies for a beginner. And um, I have a supply guide on my site that you can download. And I talk about supplies that are, I, do, I in most categories, I do like a budget friendly. I do a um, more of a middle and then more of a splurge worthy option. And, and then I also tried to, because I do sell my own supplies, but I know that there are lots of people who are from different areas and you can't always get my supplies. So, um, because I, I, I don't have the capacity to do international shipping. So I tried to put in things in there that are more widely available. All right. So this one, I could add the details, but something is telling me that I should dry this whole thing. And then I should add another tree that's kind of on top of it because then this one can kind of be like one step behind it. I kind of think that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and give this a dry again. If you're sensitive to noises, you can go ahead and turn your volume down for just a little bit. So just, I'm going to turn this on in three, two, and one. Somebody's saying, can I move the captions? So I don't actually see a captions preview. This is cool. Does this mean that there is live captions on this? I don't, it, it's not showing them to me. So yeah, you guys might have to help each other. So that was actually, it's warm air. All right, I'm going to take another one of these and I'm going to place this kind of in front because yeah, I do just feel like this one just needs... It just needs a little some, something kind of in front of it. So we're going to take that. This is going to be another kind of tall tree, I guess. 
Maybe this one's going to be kind of tall and scraggly at the same time. I'm going to make sure I really kind of put in some darker colors along this one. I'm just kind of varying the colors, tapping and rotating. I do think I just need more water and things in my brush. I haven't been using the angle brushes all that much um, for watercolor, so I'm still kind of getting to know how much water they really need to do their things. But I do feel like this was the right move. I also saw somebody else asked in the comments how many, how long I've been doing watercolors, and I think I've been doing watercolors for about five or six years now. Okay, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of some definition. I don't know why, but I just, I, I like this kind of just in the foreground. So I'm just gonna take that same color that's in my brush and let's just, I'm gonna actually avoid right here. Look at those back runs I got right there. They kind of look like grass. So I'm gonna avoid that because I like that. I think it looks great. So I'm just gonna kind of add in a couple of this just a little bit. Just like that. So we did our first one. We're gonna do at least one more of these um, so we can see with different supplies how things might turn out a little bit differently. But uh, I, really I really like these. I think it's so fun and look how we're able to kind of see that in the background, we can tell there's a little more going on there. But one of the keys to making perspective and making more like representing what we see in real life is you're really only ever focusing on one or two things. So if we can leave a little to the imagination, it's going to kind of create some of that effects for us. All right. So in order to use the same paper again, I'm going to remove this. How'd everybody do on that one? The paper I'm using is called Potentate. Um, it's I like it. It is a cotton paper. It's more of a budget friendly cotton paper. So it's not as nice as something as like an arches or a Stonehenge, but it does, it does work pretty good. Okay. So this is our, this one, I'm going to make a little note just so I can remember. This is the Windsor and Newton so that I know that this is the one here. And we're gonna do that same painting again, but this time I'm gonna use, this is a palette that I don't use that often, but I do really like. It's called Soho. Um, I really like the colors. It's got some really funky, fun colors in it. I will say, don't, I'm not crazy about the packaging. These are just kind of in here, kind of loose. And so this is not the order that this came in, but I have dropped it too many times to care about putting it back in the order that it came in. Um, because they just kind of all go around. So I, if I had to complain about this palette, it would be that, yeah, these are not in here securely, so you have to be careful. But I do really like how these are. And so we're going to see some differences in how this works. So this is the kind of lid, so we can actually kind of mix in here. And I do expect, especially that first layer, to act a little bit differently with these. So I'm going to go ahead and wet these just so they can kind of get moving and grooving together while we're prepping this again. It's called Soho. Yeah. I bought a whole bunch of watercolors a couple years ago as I was going to do a whole video, and I probably still should where I was testing them, but I got very overwhelmed um, after filming like half of them and then gave up. Uh, so I should revisit it, but this is one of the ones that I actually do use after that. So again, if you're just start, if you just joined, we're going to be painting this, or this is the one that we just did together, but we're going to be basically painting it again. And, but we're painting it with some slightly different supplies so you can see it as well as if you just joined, Hey, you get the whole lesson again. So what we're doing is we're going to fill our brush up. You could do this with a normal brush, but right now I'm using this kind of two inch flat wash brush and I'm just going to wet 
the top two thirds of my page. I'm just trying to make sure it's kind of evenly wet and I'm not going to add any more water because the last time I got a lot of warping. So we're just going to try to get moving and grooving instead of having to have me start over again. You know what? We're just going to dip straight into some of these. So this is kind of like a, a green, yellow green color. This one's going to kind of settle. This one has, this one's more of an opaque color and a lot of opaque colors, they kind of just settle and just sit. Versus in this palette, it also has some other ones that have different properties. Like I think, let's do this kind of fun color here. This is more of a, a blue green. It's gonna be more of a teal. Let's make sure I've got enough water in my brush for it to do something. And look at that. Do you see how it, it really, moved out we're actually kind of getting this like aura around it so every type of watercolor that you use is going to have some slightly different properties to it i'm just cleaning up a little bit of the water that's running over there so it doesn't run too too much and let's try this green windsor newton doesn't have quite as explosive of movement to it um, as something like this does. This is one of my favorites for real type dispersion. All right, for the sake of it, let's actually try to also mix up a color to see what happens if we do modify. So we've got a green, we've got a blue here. So let's add in some yellow to kind of make our own little green. And let's see how that's gonna do when we place this down. You know what I'm kind of wishing I'd done is I think this would have been more fun um, if I'd just done a really fun, kind of, like crazy colors, like rainbow trees or something in the background. I'm gonna put another yellow one kind of over here or a more yellowish one. Let's put some more of this in there. This is the Soho set, yeah. So yeah, if you want something that has bigger kind of explosions, this is a good one. You might you might be like, I hate I do not like the explosions. I like it to stay where it's supposed to be. And this might not be the set for you, but you might like it. Kind of depends on what you're gonna use it for. Okay, my paper is starting to dry, so I think I'm gonna have to just leave that as it is. But we can go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna just kind of flick some of those colors that I used kind of just in here, just a couple places. Okay. What, what are we thinking about the two different colors and how they act differently in these different scenarios? I'm not as good at making the thin lines with that as I am with something like this. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm just not very good at making thin lines right now. <laughs> and that's okay. Oh, I'm so glad you pulled your paints out. You want to do it with pink and purple? Yeah, love the explosions. I This is one of my favorite sets to use when I am um, doing like just abstracts and stuff. Also, the other day we had a ton of fun on um, Instagram where I asked you guys for color combinations and then I just kind of like played around with different colors and just smushed them together. That was actually a lot of fun for me. Yeah. Yeah. Help each other out in the comments, especially with international supplies. You know, I, I only have my experience. So, and I do have a lot of people who are from um, different parts of the world. So the more international suggestions or internationally available suggestions we have, the better. 
All right, so I'm gonna take a second to dry this and then we're gonna do the same kind of treatment where we add in those tap trees. So again, if you're sensitive to the noise, go ahead and just turn the volume down for a bit in three, two, and one. So today I'm using a potentate um, paper. A lot of times I use different uh, water or like cotton papers, but most of the time when I'm demonstrating stuff to you guys, I'm either using this little sketchbook, which does actually have cold press watercolor paper in it. Um, but it's, yeah, I, re I really like this paper. But the other times I'm usually using something like a Canson to show you guys. It's not as good as the other papers, but it does get the job done, especially for practicing and when you're learning. And it is a lot more budget friendly. Like usually what I like to do, this is why I don't like say just one certain type of paper because it really depends on how you like to work. But when you're starting something like this Canson, this nine by 12, then you can actually take this, this has 30 sheets in it and it's usually like around $10. And then I will usually take this and like cut the pages up. So I've got even more pages because when you're, when you're learning, you just gotta paint. You gotta just paint, 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 paint. And not everything's gonna be a masterpiece and that's totally fine but then you're not spending a ton of money on it because some of the cotton paper can get real pricey. So yeah, I do paint or I, I do these lives every other week and I do usually try to schedule it in my um in my thing. I might have to reschedule an upcoming live though and if I do I'll I'll, I'll post something in my story about that. Um, so we might have to shift one of the weekends just a bit because I do have that show and I'm supposed to be the greeter at it. So, okay. So we're going to come in here. I'm, I'm going to mix some of these colors up because I don't know. Actually, do you guys want me to mix up the custom tree colors or do we want to just dip straight into some of these and we're just going to go real vibrant. We're going to ditch any of the kind of muted or real foresty colors. Yeah, we're doing trees. We'll be doing trees here. You want more fruit tutorials? <laughs> I, I am gonna do, um, well, I'm gonna do one about pears, but it's more about shadowing soon. So um, yeah, we're gonna talk about different ways to shadow. You wanna go vibrant? Let's, yeah, let's go vibrant. I'm just gonna spray a little more water in these just to make sure that I'm going to be able to grab enough. Is this a green? I can't, hold on, let's check. Is this a green or is this a brown? So let's just double check. Oh, this is, oh, I like that green. It's a real dark green. Okay. So you, we're going to go straight in and depending on how I'm feeling about it, I might throw in just a crazy color tree, like a purple or something, but I'm not going to promise anything. <laughs> Because I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. But we're going to try this. Okay, we're going to go with this color that was here. So when we make these trees, we just want to fill up our brush with whatever color. This might be way too much of this color. I'm going to put a little more water in there. Okay. And then I'm actually, I am going to tap it off over here just so that I have a little more control over how much. And then we're just going to kind of swoop down. We're making a guideline that's just going to kind of help keep us on track. This doesn't need to be a super straight line or anything. And then I'm just going to do a couple little taps at the top to make those little bows. And then I'm going to start to kind of tap down. Ooh, this one is very, a very saturated color. I'm just tapping 
and I'm just kind of rotating my brush as I go down. I'm letting be, there be some gaps. Evergreen trees, if, whenever you walk into a forest, notice how many little gaps and how many natural variations there are into something. Um, we're painting nature adjacent, especially with these colors. And so we want them to be kind of natural. Grabbing just a little more. I'm just tapping and rotating, making it a little wider as I go down. Okay, we have our first tree. This will dry a little bit lighter. Watercolor dries a little bit lighter when it does dry. I'm using, this is just a, um, oh, actually, sorry, this is a 3 8 not a quarter inch. Um, oh. This is a Princeton Angular Wash. It, I actually used to use this for uh, acrylic, but I've taken it because it's one of my acrylic brushes that is not horribly deformed. So, because yeah, usually it loses its shape and its form where like when the water, when the acrylic gets pushed in there, but this one is one I didn't use too much. So this is, these are all, I'm using all Soho's on this one. All right, just double check in the comments here real quick. Okay, let's do another one. What about the tree trunk? These are evergreen trees, so the trunk is just kind of in the middle there. Um, and we're not, this is not a realism type painting, so we're kind of just going for the illusion of some depth. This is the one we did before. Uh, but we're doing some, we're doing a different palette and we're doing some brighter, more vibrant colors here. Okay, I'm just going to take, this is kind of that green that's over there. I'm going to tap it off so that I just have a little more control. I'm going to put this one over here as just kind of a little one. And I make the little trunk just because it's kind of my guideline to help keep me on track so that I don't make trees that are kind of growing super crooked. But that's just my personal preference. They can be a little crooked, but I just don't want to get off track as I'm doing this. So it's just kind of a tap. Oh, and this is kind of an opaque color. So I could probably actually put this a little bit in front of the other one. And it might show up a little bit. Just tapping down. Okay, we got our second tree. We're gonna go for, this is another kind of, ooh, ooh, this is a, whoa, look at this green. That is so pretty, I love that color. Okay, I guess that's the next color we're doing. Okay, where am I gonna put this one? I feel like maybe here. I'm just kind of going with what my gut tells me. I've got too much in. The main thing we're exploring in this one, because we already did paint this another time, is we're exploring some, using some different colors. One, we're using a different brand, but we're also, the other one we use more kind of muted or more natural greens. And on this one, we're just saying, nope, we're just using whatever greens are in here that are super vibrant. And you might end up liking one of these over the other. I typically tend to like um, more muted type greens when I'm doing something like this, because a lot of times I feel like it kind of fights for the attention. But that doesn't mean that my answer has to be your answer. You can have a totally answer than I do. All right, I'm going to kind of move over here. And I'm going to use that same color I just used because I really liked it. And let's put it kind of over here. That's that one. And we're just going to tap. Yeah, and keep in mind a couple things while you're doing these. If you're brand new to watercolor, you're practicing, this does not need to be perfect. Be kinder to yourself. You are learning. The other is that anytime I give you guys any sort of art advice or as I'm teaching, like if you're, like, it doesn't quite work for me that way. I, you, there's a different way that I do it. 
You should do it the way that works for you. Do it the way that is going to make you want to keep painting. Just because I think something works does not mean that it's the way that you have to do it. It's just the way I find it works. Okay, I'm definitely gonna put one more in. I'm gonna let you guys choose. Do you want another green or do we put a purple tree in? Let's do it. Let's put the purple in. Um, this this might look really neat, and it might look really not neat, uh, and that's okay. Either either one is totally fine. All right. So I do think there is. Let's just let's just check what are my my purple options are here. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at that. That's pretty. Um, we also have. And we have kind of this, this is more like a magenta, oh wow. Look at that color. Look how beautiful that color is. This is one of my favorite colors. This does dry, not quite as vibrant, but when you're placing it down, whew, it is pretty. I'm gonna do the normal purple one. Okay. So let's come over here. I need a little more space. I should have cleaned up my palette, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna place this one kind of right here. Maybe this one will be a little scraggly tree. And this will also be kind of interesting because we're layering this on top of just tapping a little bit. I think I actually need a little more of my saturated in here. We're layering this on top of that green, and so it's going to actually kind of do a little bit of muting for us because we're gonna be able to see a little bit of that green through. We're just tapping and twisting our brush getting a little bit further out as we move down. Yeah, you can actually barely tell that this is purple. So here's the color I just put placed. The same color as that one, is this purple color. But because we placed it on all those greens, we get more of the blues and it actually fits pretty good. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna add another one right over here too. Just a little one kind of peeking. Just peeking out here. I'm actually gonna kind of leave some of the details just so it, it really is just kind of peeking out. <laughs> I really like the purple there. Yeah, okay, cool. So here are the two that we did. So far, so this is with the Soho, and this was with Winsor Newton. I did go kind of in a, I, I will say this. Um, usually I'm not as crazy about this color palette. I do think this color palette would have looked better together had I done the composition here. There's something about the way these are kind of staggered is a little bit more pleasing than the way that I ended up staggering these ones. So, I think that this one has more potential than maybe it's showing just like because of the colors. I do I do think the colors could be really interesting if I had this is just for some reason more pleasing to me personally as far as kind of a composition of the ones. Um, but I do think I've got time to do, should I do one? Oh, we also need to do the foreground ones. And then I also do have time, I think, to do one more. Should we do one more painting? One more of these. And then you guys can choose. Do you want me to use, um, I was gonna use some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Tube paints, there we go. But 
I could also, we could also vote and instead maybe reuse these colors, but try to do them in even more wild colors. So like maybe we'll just do all the different colors of the rainbow. What do you guys want to see? I'm just going to kind of add these in just to kind of bring this into the foreground a little bit. I'm using Soho. I can also use a different palette too, but... Crazy fun colors. Okay, I think that's what's winning. All right, let's do all the colors. We'll just stick with this palette and we're just gonna try it again. I'm gonna take this one off. We're gonna stick to the same um, paper here, just so that we're not changing too many variables. Let me take this off. Okay. And then I'm also going to take a second to let's let's wipe this out for it because I do need to use this for a little bit of control of how much water I'm putting into my brush. So I'm just going to take some of my old paper towels and just wait okay, that looks like a beetle right like doesn't that kind of look like a beetle i don't know why but it does to me and bye bye beetle oh yesterday okay so yesterday i went to the flower farm um i belong to this little community uh well kind of a community but it's like a co-op type place and one of the things you can do there is you can go and pay to pick flowers which i love doing like I don't know, I was kind of in a funk this week, and going to pick flowers yesterday just totally took me out of the entire funk I was in. And not only that, but the insects were just, they were just having a party. And I saw really cool grasshoppers, I saw, um, there were tons of bees and bumblebees, but then I saw a hummingbird hawk moth, and it was so stinking cool just the way they move and oh my gosh anyways um that being said so i recently started a patreon and one of the things i've been dropping over there this isn't necessarily something i promised in there but i've been dropping some um reference photos that people are free to use and i'm going to upload a bunch of pictures of the insects and things over there soon because and some some really neat flowers too Okay, I've cleaned that out. This did stain. So some of these are more dye-based, but this did stain this. It's okay, it won't impact the colors I'm mixing on top of it. It's just gonna look like that. So that's all right. We're gonna go with the flow. I wanna, yeah, I wish you could show me too. Okay, let's see. So I'm gonna take, this is this, this, my water is a little bit dirty now, but that's okay. It's not too dirty. So again, I'm just gonna wet about the two thirds the top of the page. You could wet the whole thing if you wanted to um, just bring them all the way down to the bottom. For some reason, I like having the little lines. I like that they're kind of like this unfinished foreground that your brain, some people are going to look at it and see a lake, some people will look at it and see a field, and I like that, um, but you might have a different answer to that. Okay, so we're just going for whatever colors. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my quill brush for this, and let's, let's grab some bright yellow, and let's drop that in. Do, 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 do. I'm just kind of tapping around. Oh, but you, can you see the little aura thing that's happening. Let's take that really beautiful kind of magenta type color. This one's a stunner. I'm going to start from the bottom because it's going to really... Woo! <laughs> I feel like I need to actually mix a little water in with that because that's very vibrant. So let's just kind of use that to kind of Move it around. Do, do, do. Like that. If we've got a little bit too much, if you're like, that's way too much, I'm just gonna kind of take 
like a drier brush and just kind of tap it off so it gets a little bit lighter. There's just a little bit, there's a little too much color going there. Let's take a, ooh, there's a neon blue in this set. So let's, let's drop that in over here. Okay. I'm gonna do some of that teal. So I primarily use um, pans. I used to use tubes a lot. And I do really like tubes, and it's not that I don't recommend them, because as a matter of fact, I do think they're more useful in a lot of cases. Um, because you can make pans out of tubes. But my main problem with, I switched over to mainly using pans when I started teaching more. And that's because pans are more budget friendly, so people can actually get their hands on them for less. Ooh, look at that. And you can usually get a higher quality pan for less than you can a tube paint. So like when I've tested cheaper tube paints, they have been very meh, like just not great. I'm gonna throw in a Dude, there's there's this orange. Uh, they've just not been great, and I don't want I don't want you guys to to start a hobby. Whoa! This is not even picking up how bright this is in real life. That is insane. I don't want you guys to have to go out and buy these tube paints that are really really pricey. Uh, if you're not entirely sure this is the hobby you want, eventually you might get to the point where you're like, yeah, I can totally justify spending $15 on one tube of paint because, you know, once you get into a hobby and if that is within your budget, that's great. But uh, it is hard to find tube paints that are cheap and good. So, all right, I've got a whole bunch of just kind of wild colors here. But that's why I mainly use the pan paints because I just, I just find that there's less variation in how good or bad they are, I suppose. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this. Oh wait, actually, let's put some of these colors in before I forget the colors I used. Into my little, my little flicks. I, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with these. Woo, woo. These might not be your jam and that's fine. Speaking of jam, I, we picked raspberries too yesterday, uh, and raspberry is my favorite jam. So we were thinking about making some jam from the raspberries, but I'm like, I think I'm gonna eat them all before <laughs> we actually make it to jam. And there we go. That is the um, strangest transition you will probably hear today. Painting to jam. Just kind of putting some of these colors throughout. I've been really liking um, lately trying to keep things kind of unfinished on some level because I do think it's really satisfying for your brain to just have a little bit of like the unfinished chaos because your brain's like, yes, I will fill in those details. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna dry this. So again, if you, actually before I do, I wanna show you guys something because this is another property that I don't usually talk about in watercolor. That's kind of interesting to me. These two, this yellow and this teal, they were the ones that kind of had those auras where when you drop it, the color sinks, but then there's this kind of around the edge that creates kind of this aura. And I do find that ones like that, look, they dry way faster. It's like they push the moisture away on the paper. Whereas this area is still wet, this area is pretty much dry. So that's another thing that you can kind of look for in your watercolors so that you know 
Okay, I like this one because it's going to do that, but then I'm trying to like, you know, add more color to it. Is that going to make the paper dry a little bit more and kind of impede? There are so many different things you can look for in your watercolors to see kind of what they're doing um, that are going to really affect the way you paint. Okay, I'm going to dry this now, so if you need to, turn your volume down in three, two, and one. Okie dokie. There we go. I'm going to start with that pink one. I don't know why, but I just want to put a more defined pink tree here. So just as to a recap, if you want to paint these evergreen trees, what you want to do is I've been using a, it's actually a three eighths. <laughs> uh, so it's just under a half an inch. Uh, angle brush. You could use a flat brush for this. Technically, a lot of people use fan brushes to do this. For some reason, I just really like angle brushes. I've really liked them, always liked them for, uh, even when I was doing like acrylic painting, most of my brushes that I use are angle brushes because I feel like you get the flat edge, plus you can get that line, you can get kind of into little corners. I don't know. I don't know what it is about them, but I really like them. Okay, so I'm just getting a little in here. Mine dries so quickly. Yeah, it does. I mean, to be fair, I also, I I'd only wet mine once, and then we did a lot of chit-chatting. So if you were a little behind, uh, as far as, I did just have a little more time. So I'm going to put this one here. So it's straight down. Let's tap at the top. And then, now we start to tap and twist. So this is our experimentation one. Oh, before I go any further, I see a bird. You guys see the little chickadee? Whoop, whoop. And then he's got two legs here. Can I, does anybody else see that? I see like a little <laughs> baby chicken right there. Baby chick. All right, baby chick, sorry. You're gonna get painted over a little bit. It's kind of like cloud watching when you paint with watercolors, especially wet on wet. Sometimes something's going to show up that you didn't actually paint. I mean to. So this one, we did more muted colors, then we kind of dipped our toes in a little bit to do in more vibrant colors. And now we're just going for it. I'm gonna do this kind of teal blue color here. And I'm gonna put that one kind of over here. I kind of wanna hide this little edge thing that's happening here because I think it might kind of ruin the illusion a little bit. So let's put that one here, which will kind of help me to hide. Just tapping and twisting. So how many of you who are following along did more than one of these? Did you just paint the one or are you painting some um, ones that have some slightly different colors? This one could be really neat. I'm gonna do, I don't know if this one's gonna really show up, but I feel like I, I want I want some more of this really bright, vibrant orange. Just 
do that top right mustard color. Okay, sure, why not? Let's do that. I'm gonna put that over. All right. Ooh, where do I wanna put it? Let's just double check what the color looks like. Oops, that is. Oh, I accidentally put another color in there. Hold on. Let me just get a fresh little tester strip. That could be interesting in there. Okay. I'm gonna put that over here. I feel like that needs to go there. Okay. This is a pretty mustard color. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little one. Just tap. If you mess up, you can always make your tree a little bigger. Like so if I don't like the top part, we can always come up a little bit more. It's all about adapting, especially when you're beginning. The best thing you can do is learn to kind of adapt to things that are happening. Well, that's fun. I like that. What other colors and where should I put them? I feel a little stuck on where to put stuff, trying to balance the sizes, the placement, and then also the colors. So why don't you guys just help me decide? It is a so, yeah, this is the Soho palette. The bright orange. Should I do the bright orange kind of right along here? Really big one on the left. Do we want we want the bright orange to be on the left or do we want it to be more in the middle? <laughs> Ooh, let's see, middle. I think middle is winning just by a bit. Okay. We're gonna get some of this really bright orange. This is so bright that the camera cannot even figure out how bright it is. Like in person. I'm gonna start him down here. In person, this is like twice as bright as I feel like the camera is actually picking it up. I'm also gonna have to like really to get kind of the opaque qualities of this, I'm going to have to really kind of load this on. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of sink in. So I'm going to kind of like, I'm almost using this more like a gouache uh, thickness or consistency. In person, that is so bright. It looks very dull. It looks like a very similar color to over here, but it could not be more different in person. All right, I feel like we need one more tree. Got time to do one more tree. Need a bright blue to the left. Okay. Let's do a bright blue to the left. Let's see, do we want... Here's blue option one. Or blue option two. What do we think? One or two? Two, okay. All right, we're gonna put the bright blue tree over here. Let's make it about here. Okay. A couple little taps and then tap and twist. Oh, I do think you were right. The blue, the blue looks good there. It looks really good with that kind of magenta color as well as kind of against the per or the uh, orange. I like that. This is actually coming off way dark. It's showing up more vibrant in person, but you know, that's how it is. Oh, 
Oh, this this is pretty fun. This is fun. I'm gonna um, just add in a couple of these little flicks in here, a couple areas with the new colors that we've added. And then let's we'll compare all three together. And then I'm gonna go make myself breakfast. I did eat a bunch of raspberries this morning, but <laughs> I like to make myself a big breakfast after I get off of these lives as kind of a little, little treat. That is su super fun. This is the other thing I really like about painting live on here is, one, I get to show you guys, and you guys can ask questions and stuff, but also we get to kind of play with things that I normally wouldn't do. So we painted three together today. We did this super vibrant one. Before that, we did this. This was also with the Soho one, and we did pretty vibrant greens. But before that, we used the Windsor Newton which I do really like their palette for using to make more like neutral nature type greens. But this one is just, the Soho palette is like a play palette. Like it's one that you just play around with and you just have fun and experiment with. I, in my opinion, I suppose. So here we go. What do you guys think? What do you like best? The Windsor Newton, the really colorful or the vibrant greens? What was your favorite? Also, if you painted more than one, which one that you did is your favorite? I'm trying to put them all on. We've got a lot of mixed answers. This one is probably my favorite, um, but I do also, I think it's still mainly the the composition of it. There's just something about it that I just, the placement of the trees, I feel like I did a better job on placement of trees on this one than any of the other ones. Um, I think, I will say on this, I love that glow coming from behind. So my favorite like area on one is right here. Uh, but I do really like, I like the placement on this one. So anyways, that's going to be it for me today. I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. Um, if you do paint and you make a little video, please tag me so I can see. I love seeing what you guys make. I will be posting this one eventually over on YouTube so that those of you who came in late or for people who couldn't make it today, I know people have things to do, uh, but I still want you to have a chance to be able to watch it. Also, you, I am doing a lot of stuff over on Patreon. We're doing some fun extra stuff, and we do an extra live every month, but it's more like a, uh, a Google meeting so that I can actually talk to you guys and see stuff and things like that. So. If you're interested in that, uh, that's over on Patreon. So I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm going to go make some breakfast.